JBN, we keep you informed. I am Michelle Jones, and in the news, 28-year-old killed in Granville drive-by shooting. A man was shot and killed during a drive-by shooting on Guns Drive in the Valenstone community of Granville, St. James on Saturday. Dead is 28-year-old Romaine Scott of a Granville address. According to a source, Scott's death is linked to an ongoing gang feud in the community. When contacted, counselor for the Granville Division, Michael Troop, shared that the incident was the third murder within the division since Thursday. Granville is at a critical spot as we speak. We have had three murders in three days. It is tit for tat, he said. Troop also pointed out that Scott's death marks the 15th murder in Granville since late May. And against that background, said he was renewing his call for a zone of special operations in the division. We have 15 murders now. If this division does not qualify for a zone of special operations, I don't know what else will qualify for it because it is not 15 murders since the start of the year. It is 15 murders over a period of three months, Troop said. I am renewing my call for permanent police presence or give us a state of emergency for three months. But we need to get action. No more promises. We need action. The residents are scared and they have started to move out, he added. The councillor is also calling for a police post to be implemented in Granville. He noted that his request for a police post in the volatile community comes amid residents' complaints of not knowing how to contact the Meadows of Irwin Police in the case of an emergency. Now, we don't have a police station because it burned down about three months ago. What I'm calling for is to have a police post be placed in Granville or we can use the community centre as a base. Nobody in Granville as we speak Know the number for the police post in Meadows of Irwin. Not even me, the councillor, know it, Troop said. Gang feuds behind Steertown murders, say cops. The police are blaming gang feuds for a number of recent murders in the Steertown section of the parish. There have been at least six killings reported in the area since the start of the year, making it St. Anne's most crime-plagued community. The latest victim is 26-year-old Tafari Sinclair, otherwise called Tokum from steer town a gunman killed him in broad daylight last friday in the dam ed area of the town the jamaica constabler force said reports are that at 12 30 pm sinclair was along the roadway in his community when he was pounced upon by a lone gunman who opened gunfire at him he was taken to hospital where he was pronounced dead said the police support the community recorded his first murder on the evening of january 1 when a gunman shot dead 39-year-old groundsman Usain Fletcher from Damhead, Steer Town. Two other men with whom Fletcher was standing at his gate were wounded in the attack. Three days later, a man armed with a gun invaded a house at Green Bay and shot 48-year-old cosmetologist Althea Gallimore, also called Nancy. She succumbed to her wounds on January 22, the JCF said. Another murder was committed on the morning of March 24 when a gunman killed 26-year-old taxi operator Roshane Scully. A man who was inside the Toyota Vox, the minibus driven by Scully, was shot and wounded. The police reported that a gunman also struck on the evening of May 6, killing 40-year-old boat captain Oswald Smith. At the time of the incident, Smith was sitting on a wall at his gate in Roaring River. Police later arrested and charged 28-year-old Devor Hickey from the same community in relation to that crime. In another incident, Gunmen shot and killed 55-year-old Decoy Robinson, otherwise called Silent, on June 11. The crime transpired at Robinson's home in Roaring River. Despite the spike in murders in Steer Town, St. Anne has had fewer murders so far this year than last year. Up to August 12, the police had recorded 30 murders in the parish, compared to 43 for the corresponding period last year. Government ready to roll out St. Catherine's school train service September. The government says it is ready to roll out the school train service for 720 students in the parish of St. Catherine come next month. The service will be operated by the Jamaica Railway Corporation in conjunction with the Ministry of Education, Youth and Information and the Jamaica Urban Transit Company. The final test run was conducted on Thursday. Richard Troop the Education Ministry's Acting Director of Safety and Security in Schools told the Jamaica Information Service that he is looking forward to the school train service. The government has indicated that there may be a delay in face-to-face -face schooling because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Meanwhile, 
troops at the Education Ministry has a particular interest in the reliability of the rail service, the safety of the children, and the standard of discipline that will be maintained. We believe that this is going to make a significant difference in the quality of transportation service provided to students, Troop said. It will cost $100 per trip. The fear includes shorter service of the Spanish Town Railway Service to the respective school in the Spanish Town, St. Catherine environs. Criminals migrate into St. Anne, but major crimes still down. The police have apprehended quite a number of criminals fleeing other parishes and is seeking refuge in St. Mary, according to Superintendent Bobbitt Morgan Simpson, who is in charge of the parish. What we need to understand is that St. Mary is a quiet parish, she said Thursday, during a sitting of the parish's municipal corporation. She added, we have been getting information and finding that there are criminals migrating from the hotspots, getting away from their enemies and coming into this space. Whenever we get the information, then we'll take action in terms of operational activities. We have apprehended quite a number of them. When we do our checks, we found that they had been wanted in another area. So we continue to partner with the other divisions in terms of the whole matter of crime fighting. In addition to urging residents to continue helping to catch migrating criminals, Morgan Simpson appealed for information regarding murders perpetrated in St. Mary. One of the challenges that we're having, including the murders, is that persons are afraid to come forward to give the statements to the police. They will tell us, but to get them to put it on paper is really where the challenge lies, she said. Some of the times they'll tell us that the person who committed the crime has on a mask, and so they really don't know. The whole matter of seeing blind and hearing deaf is affecting investigations. If you saw nobody's going to tell us what happened, then it is going to be a challenge for us. The senior cop noted that, even with scientific evidence, eyewitness testimony is paramount in securing convictions in court. We are using the technology to assist us in solving crime, and that has been helping us a lot in terms of picking up and using the DNA, using the scientific evidence, and so on. But eyewitness information is very, very important as well, and some appealing to citizens to assist us in this regard, she emphasized. In the meantime, Morgan Simpson stated that disputes among residents are the main factors behind most murders committed in St. Mary. She disclosed that, so far this year, 11 murders have been recorded in the parish, compared to 21 for the corresponding period last year. Of that 11, one murder transpired in the Islington Police Area, two in Anato Bay, three in Richmond, three in Orocobesta, and two in Gale. Regarding other crimes, no rape has been reported in the parish so far this year, compared to 15 in the same time frame last year. Robberies are done by five so far compared to the 15 recorded in the same period last year. Morgan Simpson added, We have a total of 69 serious and violent crimes committed in the parish since the start of the year. 37 have been cleared. For the same period in 2020, there were 92 serious and violent crimes reported in St. Mary. Break-ins and shootings remain among the main concerns in the parish, the police said. Taxi groups reject 15% fear increase One further talks with government. Some groups of taxi operators have rejected the 15% fear increase announced by the government. The increase, the first in eight years, is due to take effect tomorrow. Last night, the Transport Operators Development Sustainable Services, TODS, convened a meeting with other taxi groups to review the fare increase. According to Todd's, the president of the Jamaica Association of Owners and Operators, Lou Barton, and the heads of four smaller associations attended, as well as representatives of ride-sharing apps, Red Plate and Arrive. Todd's president, Ajuta Newman, says after a two-and-a-half-hour meeting, 70% of the taxi operators voted to reject the increase. Instead, they want to have discussions with the transport minister and the head of the transport authority. The association needs to also know the reason why the Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC, did not get a fear increase, said Newman in a statement. In announcing the fear increase last week, the transport minister said the 15% fear increase would not be applied to the JUTC and Montego Metro. Todd's wants all public transport operators to delay increasing their fares until further notice. Jamaica records 656 new COVID cases, 15 deaths in 24 hours. Jamaica recorded 656 new COVID-19 cases and 15 deaths on Saturday. 
bringing the infection total to 57,945 and the virus death toll to 1,300. The Ministry of Health and Wellness reported that the new cases comprise 398 females and 258 males with ages ranging from 64 days to 94 years. The cases were recorded in Kingston and St. Andrew, 116, Westmoreland, 82, Manchester, 77, St. James, 67, Hanover, 48, St. Catherine and St. Thomas, 45 each, St. Elizabeth and Clarendon, 42 each, St. Anne, St. Mary and Trelawney, 27 each, and Portland, 11. The latest stats include a 50-year-old male from Manchester, a 90-year-old male, a 57-year-old female, and an 85-year-old female, all from Clarendon, a 78-year-old female, a 57-year-old female, a 44-year-old female, a 48-year-old female, a 67-year-old female, an 89-year-old female, a 58-year-old female, a 59-year-old female, and an 81-year-old male, all from Westmoreland, a 60-year-old male, and one just six year old female, both from St. James. Jamaica has 8,837 active cases after 27 people recovered from the virus, bringing the total number of recoveries to 47,438. Currently, 421 people are hospitalized, 44 of which are critically ill, while 95 are moderately ill. JBN, we keep you informed. Please remember to subscribe, like, share. Leave us a comment and click the notification bell to receive our daily news items.